guys, welcome back. Uh, something a little different today. Uh, I've been getting a few questions on uh, how I make my challenge locks, or what I use to make my challenge locks, or what tool, or whatever. So, uh, I figured I would just show you guys. Um, first off, we're going to start with the basics. Uh, you need a lock, right? So, uh... You got a few different locks to choose from. You got uh, you got your ovals, you got your euros, you got your mortis, and you got your uh, key and knob or uh, kicks, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, any of them are good to uh, build a challenge lock. Well, a few things that I look for, you know. Uh, it doesn't have to be a decent lock. It doesn't have to be a good lock could be a shitty lock it just depends on what you're trying to do and uh, how hard or difficult you want to make it so uh, I got a few processes of uh, elimination in my uh, picking of cylinders uh, first off uh, it's got to have a key right for a challenge lock uh, if I want to send it out as a challenge lock I want you to know that it uh, it does function, it does work, so I want it to have a key. So that would uh, take this one out of there, that would eliminate this one, and that would eliminate this one. So, I'll just take those right out of here. Um, and then, uh, what, kind of, what kind of cylinder do you want to use, you know? Uh, do you want a Euro? Do you want... Uh, mortis or a key and knob uh, do you want it to be difficult do you want it to be easy somewhat moderate what uh, I would probably never turn this into a challenge lock it is a uh, ICO uh, I almost said Yale it's a uh, it's a two star SKG I've actually never seen them stamped twice I don't know what it stands for, but it, it's got the, can you even see that? Let me see, there you go, now you can see it. It's got the two star SKG, and then I believe that's a one star Yale, uh, Keyway, or SK, I have no idea. I'm really not good with uh, these Euros signature. I have no idea, but look at this bidding. Gorgeous bidding for a challenge lock, right? But if you were ever make this any more difficult, you probably would never get it open. And for the most part, 80% of the people that picked on it wouldn't get it. I mean, it's hard enough just to pick this uh, with standard uh, how it comes. It's got security pins in it. But uh, to turn this into a challenge lock, you'd need to be really good. So scratch that. Uh, yeah, and then how many pins you want, uh, is a factor, right? So, uh, I'm five or six, right? So, say, uh, you want this one, but this is a seven pin lock, so, unless you're gonna pin it up for seven, you're wasting it, so, scratch this one. And then you got this one, you know, do you want to cut a new key because it's shitty bidding? It is smooth as butter, but, uh, you know, if you want to cut a new key, okay, you can use that one. But I think we're going to go with this one. Yeah, that's not the one. That is an Everest. You, you could make a challenge lock out of that, but why would you want to? Just go with this a little uh, U.S. lock, right? So now I got my uh, cylinder. It's pretty pretty decent then uh, <coughs> you go with the basic tools right this is what I use I got my little tray I got a little broken uh, literally a nail file uh, my little uh, 6 30 seconds uh, tap from DeWalt if you're wondering this is what it is I don't use the drill bit. I just use the tap. I think I want to say it's like five, five or six bucks at Home Depot. But uh, 
six thirty seconds. Uh, Thirty-two threads per inch, I think it stands for. But that's what I use. So, uh, and then you got your files, right? You got your little needle files. Got a round one. Got a flat one. And then you got uh, another flat but triangle. So you got, uh, you know, you get decent angles on there. I got the handle, but I don't use it. This thing was literally like five bucks, I want to say, six ninety nine at uh, Menards. Cheap. Easy to work with. Cheap. If you break it, you're not out a ton of money. Right? Same with the tap. And then uh, you got your Dremel. And a standard razor blade. Okay. I use this for uh, my serrations. Uh, if you want to make some real fine serrations, I also got this screwdriver that I filed down. This thing is sharp as a razor blade. Uh, you put your pin in the Dremel. Oh well, I'm an idiot. And uh, you know what it is. You put your pin in the Dremel and then you turn it on and use this for your serrations right or the razor but if you're using a razor make sure it's spinning away from you so if it catches and rips it out of your fingers it goes towards the floor or away from you it doesn't come up into your face or your neck and end up killing you okay uh, now you gotta figure out do you want to make pins or do you want to just use pins right so I got all these pins here, right? So, uh, I got my uh, drivers, I got my standard key pins, I got my security pins, and then uh, you do not want to use these if you're building a, a challenge lock. These are wafers, okay? They come in many sizes, a lot. They're called master wafers. Uh, they're usually to, uh, you know, let me just do it like this. They're usually used if... Uh, someone wants to make a lock accessible for multiple keys okay so you do not want those in your challenge lock so we scratch that okay and then i know a lot of people that uh, uh this is a driver okay you see that flat on both sides that is a driver some people may think this is a driver. This is not a driver. This is a key pin. It is not flat on either side. It has a beveled edge on both sides. This is pretty much a quick set key pin. Okay. You do not want to use this. If you do use this as a key pin or a driver, flatten it out. Uh, file down both edges because with that beveled edge it's going to be easier to hit that shear line <clears throat> easier than you could even imagine so uh, now we got our tools we got our uh, little lock we got our pins if we don't uh, want to make our own pins but uh, and you got to take it apart right it's not too bad bidding I mean nothing special but it's not going to be a uh, extremely hard challenge lock either. Just a little uh, fun pick, we'll say. But uh, let me take this apart, and I'll get back to you. All right, we're back. Now that we have our uh, lock taken apart, uh, you got to decide what you want to do. <coughs> uh, what do you want to do with the key pins? Uh, what do you want to do with the driver pins? Now you got to remember. Uh, the longer the key pin you have, the shorter your driver pin is going to be. Okay? The shorter the key pin you have, the longer your driver pin can be. Uh, and if you're uh, threading the top and putting grub screws in there, you may not be able to use the same driver pins that came with the lock. Because depending on how uh, deep the cut is and how tall your 
key pin is for that one chamber. Uh, the key may not clear it because it may uh, hit the peak of as far as it can go and your key may not clear. So keep that in mind if you're uh, thinking about threading the top and putting grub screws in. Uh, do we want to make this super hard? No. Do we want to make it somewhat fun? Pick? Of course. Why not? So we're going to uh, we're going to put some threads in there. Not all of them. Just uh, I don't know. Let's say uh, one, three, and uh, four. We'll go one, three, four. So uh, let's do that right now. All right. Instead of doing it off camera, I'm going to uh, show you what I do. And uh, I don't have a handle because I did get the cheap one. Who needs a handle? You, you use pliers. Started with your fingers anyways, right? So, uh, I do use a little WD-40. You should be using oil, but uh, I don't have any, so. I'm give it a little WD-40, and uh, I just start it like that, okay? Now, I look always, always I look and make sure that it is upright, and the right position, both front and back, up and down, vertical, horizontal, before I ever start to put any pressure on that and uh, thread it in. So it looks pretty straight to me. I'm going to put one twist in it, if I can do it, around the camera. I'm going to make sure we're still lined up. Now at this point you're still good, just make sure you're still level put a little pressure while you fix it okay give it a little twist make sure okay still good okay we're going on an angle so we don't want to do that it is a little difficult without the handle and without being in a vise but you know whatever so you just make sure you're still uh, level, you're not cattywampus, otherwise it will cross-thread. And, uh, well, it doesn't matter if you're cross-threading, but, because it's only a challenge lock, but your threads won't come out that good. And you'll know right away when uh, you're good to go when you're in there. And once you feel a bottom out or stop, stop. It will not go any farther. And then you just back it out. Remember, you got uh, metal on these threads, so don't rub your eyes. And just blow it out. Probably just blew that into my coffee. And then now uh, we got one chamber threaded. Looking really good. Now what I do, uh, I usually use the back of uh, my Sparrow's pick and uh, chamfer it like this well, if I can stay on there and that uh, just gets the rough edges and kind of makes it a little better not bad now I'll do the other two and we'll come back all right we're back another thing I just realized that works really good for uh, chamfering your edges this little z-bar just put the corner in there like that go like that and it will get rid of all your little burrs that are uh, sitting on the edge. But now we got uh, the three chambers we wanted uh, threaded up. And uh, we're good to go on the chamber. Now I guess uh, if you wanted to get really crazy, you could do some uh, undercutting. Or uh, counter milling, or whatever. But uh, I don't really care for uh, undercutting. Because then you're getting into uh, some real hard locks, and uh, most people won't be able to pick them. But uh, to make this simpler, we're just going to uh, make a few mods to uh, the key pins, and we're going to put in. Uh, uh, Why? Well, I just had a total brain fart. Uh, <laughs> normal security pins. Uh, instead of making our own so what do we want uh, we'll just pick in here right uh what do we got 
That is a standard. We don't want that. Put the standard away. We will need one standard in there, so... I'm not going to replace the one standard that we got going. I think I do have a homemade one in here. But I think it might be too tall for these. Yeah, I think it is. So let's go... Uh, we'll do a mushroom. Uh, we'll do a spool. Hello? We'll do whatever that is. Another spool. Uh, serrated. Oh, that's my homemade one. Look how fine these are. That's from the razor blade. Looking pretty good. I never uh, cleaned up the edges, but look how fine that is. You can't get any finer than that. I don't think that'll work. I think it's too tall. I could shave it down, but we'll use one of these uh, serrated ones. And, uh... We'll stick with that. We'll keep the one uh, standard up front. Actually, you know what? We're going to swap this spool out for that standard. We'll go there. I have a standard in the middle. No, that doesn't make sense because that's threaded. Uh, threaded on three and four. So we'll keep uh, the standard in two. <coughs> All right. So we got that going like that. And then uh, we just got to do a few mods to our uh, key pin. So uh, I will do that right now and uh, I'll be back to you. Alright guys, we are back. Uh, this is what we came up with. These are all the old drivers that uh, we did not use. We did stick with one of the original drivers. Hopefully these drivers aren't too tall. I never did test them. And these are the key pins that we uh, came up with. Look at these puppies. They're not bad. Pretty decent. Uh, for number one, we got a triple serrated. Real fine. For number two, we got uh, somewhat of a spool or torpedo key pin. For number uh, three... Uh, I like to call it like a wedding cake. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's like a wedding cake. It's leveled. You know, the bottom being the biggest, the center, and then the top being the thinnest. Uh, number four is a double serration, and number five is a standard keep. For uh, number one driver is a uh, commercial spool. For number two, standard driver. For number three is commercial uh, serrated. For number five is a commercial spool. And for number, or for number four, commercial spool. For number five, it's a commercial mushroom. So, that's what we came up with. And then, uh, put it together and boom, you got yourself a, uh, threaded core with a, uh, pretty decent, uh, challenge lock pin job. But, uh, that's how I go about my, uh, challenge locks. And uh, those are the things I use. So you got the, the three needle files, the, uh, the broke off uh, fingernail file, standard razor, new or old. Uh, sometimes it's actually better to use an old one because uh, all you're doing is using that real fine point. You don't need it to be super sharp. It could be the dullest razor in the house. Uh, it's just to, because brass is super soft. So it's just to start working its way in there so uh, then you got the six thirty seconds uh, tap which I don't know where it went but uh, your Dremel your pins here's the tap and uh, your core now like I said you you really do want one with a key because uh, you want to know it's gonna work and open because you know once you set it what are you gonna pick it to see if it opens uh, I mean, you could, but you'll never know if it actually opens or you just can't pick it. So, it is better to have one with a key. So, uh, but that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, shoot the thumbs down. If you're not already, please subscribe. And, uh, 
like always, uh, shoot me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Just say hi or uh, suggest a uh, new lock you'd like to see me pick. But uh, that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Uh, I just filmed a video of showing you guys how I build challenge locks and what to use. Never did show you it back together and fully working. It works like a charm. It's smooth as butter. Doesn't get caught up either way. I figured, uh, what good is a lock if you're not going to pick it, right? So, uh, let's see if we can get into it. Now, I have not tried to pick this. It's literally been 10 minutes. I just put it back together. But, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put this... Uh, at the end of the video of making the challenge lock. Try not to tighten this too much. I don't want to snap this plastic. Or uh, just make it a separate video. Smooth as butter. And it's just a US, uh, US lock. <laughs> and the funny thing is it actually has the bidding 53442 on the back. But no matter. Let's see if we can't uh, get into this puppy, huh? 50,000 spry bar. We're going to go clockwise. And I believe we can use 25,000 uh, pick. I think. Uh, it drags a little. We're going to go 18,000. Tiny little slop. Not much factory, and it's because I did leave uh, one standard key pin, one standard driver. Uh, normally, you just need one standard driver, and that will keep the slop out of your lock. If you don't have the standard driver, and I say driver because, uh, and you want to put that in uh, one of your lowest uh, key pins, maybe not the lowest, but one of the lowest, and that's so it sits in the shear line and. Uh, You'll, the person picking won't know if there's spools or the most slop you get is because uh, one of the security pins is in the shear line and it's, it's pretty much showing it's serration or spool or waste or thinner waste but let's shut up and get into this or see if we can get into it pin one um, is that binding or is that it's just an awkward uh really straight up and down uh actually let me start in the back get a feel for this thing all right wow i'm gonna have to pick from this ledge i think let's go to let's go to five is this five pin or six five that was four No one else is binding. How is that possible? There we go. That was off of uh, two or three. That's two. A little more off two. Go to one. Click off one. Go to four. <laughs> A little deeper now. That was four. Counter on four. Didn't quite get him or I lost someone else. Yeah, I lost one. So uh, let's go back to four. I think I got him, but lost somebody else. That was one. No, that was two. Here's one. No! Don't do it to me. Come on. Shit, I'm sorry, guys. Sheet. No! Sorry for the yell. Hopefully it's not too loud. Pin one. I need somewhere a little higher reach. I gotta hold this, too. Probably just blew out your eardrums with that uh, yell. 
Alright, now one is good. <laughs> this is a very... Still good, still good. Uh, very awkward keyway. It's just very rounded. That's five, four. And we're open. There we go. Not gonna gut it because you know what's in it. But uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad. I'll put that in the back at the at the end of the video. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed what you watched, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, shoot the thumbs down. If you're not already, please subscribe and like always, guys. Let me know what you thought. Even though I said this at the end of the other video, it's just still going at the end. And uh, yeah. This is technically my fourth challenge slot now. So, fun little pick. Have a good one, guys.